She is the author of a novel and four collections of poetry, including Breach, which focuses on Hurricane Katrina and its aftermath. So thank you, Barbara Bowen, Kamiko Han, and Ida Chang for bringing us all here together. It's so much fun to listen to all of um, my CUNY creative writing colleagues. I love this. Um, so I wanted to read something about injustice, so I'm going to read a poem about Hurricane Katrina. Uh, last year marked the 10th anniversary of Katrina, which happened on August 29th, 2005. And this poem is about a town uh, right outside of New Orleans called Araby, which is in St. Bernard Parish, which suffered through the hurricane not only because of the devastation of the storm itself and the levees breaking, but also because of an environmental disaster as well. Araby. In other neighborhoods, houses stripped to boards and floorboards, houses like sick fish ready for gutting. In other neighborhoods, trailers sit on cement blocks beside houses crushed and flattened. In other neighborhoods, search and rescue. But here, the landscape is fine grit and rubble. The landscape is all flatness. The landscape is erased. Now my father and I drive down St. Claude Avenue, not talking. The view out the window evacuates speech. All we can do is look at this place, where the morning of the hurricane, after hours of rain, the winds suddenly quieted, where those who stayed stepped out on their porches, walked into their yards, talked to neighbors across the cyclone fence, wondering how they avoided, then turned, and saw the first black wall of water surge across the railroad tracks, saw it wrench homes from foundations, saw all of St. Bernard Parish destroyed in 15 minutes, where those who stayed were lost in water poisoned with spilled crude from Murphy oil. Across the city that day, my parents waited on the second floor of the brick house, windows shuttered as if that gesture could protect Across the country, I willed them to break through the ceiling to the attic to wait on the roof for rescue. The leaden water, the water lapping at a roof like a lake's edge, the families stranded on that roof, in that city, in that forgotten. The families waiting, the flatboat that never arrives. Imagine the forgotten blackened with mold, water turned to ash and cinder. Now my father and I drive and drive and turn, looking for any intact house, any car in a driveway, any resident restaking a buckled fence, or pulling bricks, or raking debris into garbage bags, and there is nothing. But street after street of lost front steps, tar shingles, burned off grass. And I want to know who decides what is unsavable, and why were my parents safe? Here, for days, there was no salvage or searching for the dead or the living. And when, finally, the parish was sealed off, the survivors first housed in the jail, then waiting on Chalmette Slip, then crowded on a ferry for Algiers, all that was left were water moccasins twining through dead, salted grass, and still no one came. Thanks.